Hey everybody, what's up? It's Rob. Welcome back to the Alley Cash Show. So today we're going to be talking about the importance that labeling can play in your applications. Um, now, if you if you follow the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which is really a set of criteria for making sure that your app is accessible, the very first thing you'll see in their guidelines in section 1.1 is that you need to provide text alternatives for uh, you know controls and, and and images and things like that in your page. So looking at section 1.1.1, we can see that um, if non-text content is a control or accepts user input, then it has to have a name that describes its purpose. And you'll see um, you know, mention of things needing names in the WCAG guidelines in a lot of different places. It can be a little confusing when you're reading these guidelines to, to sort of understand what they mean by that, right? Because I thought we were talking about labeling, but it's saying names. Um, the term itself, name, is a bit overloaded in some of the accessibility specs. You'll also see sometimes it's referred to as like text alternatives and things like that. Um, but really, what we're talking about here is for any sort of you know, control or, or image on your site, it's going to have a few different um, attributes to it. It's going to have a name or, or a label. We often use those interchangeably. Um, it can also have a role. So you know, something can be a role of button or a role of a checkbox or something like that. Um, it can also sometimes have a state, right? So like a button could be disabled or not. So today, we're going to specifically talk about you know, the, the name or the label of controls and really why it's important and how you can label elements uh, differently or the different techniques you can use in your application. So follow me over here to JS bin. I'm going to walk through just like a few examples. Uh, the first is we're going to start with a very simple button, right? just a, a very simple button element. And one of the things that I want to show off is how to use the new experimental Chrome accessibility dev tools to actually um, figure out what the, the name and the label for your controls is. So I've shown this off maybe a few times, but I realized I actually probably didn't do a good job of teaching folks how to turn these dev tools on. So the way you do that is you go to Chrome colon slash slash flags. And this will open um, a bunch of features that you can turn on in your browser. These are all oftentimes experimental things, so you got to be careful about just like flipping stuff on. Um, but the thing we're going to look for here is we'll look for the word dev tools. And there's a line here that says enable dev tools experiments right here. So I'll click the Enable button. And then down at the bottom of the screen, I'll have this, uh, this prompt to tell me to relaunch. So it's going to relaunch everything. OK, wait for Chrome to restart. And once it comes back online, we now know that our, our dev tools are, are ready to start working with. So I'll go over to JS bin, where I've been working on that little button example, open my dev tools uh, using Command Option J on my, my Mac. And, and then I'm going to click the, uh, the little context menu over here on the right-hand side, this like three-dot thing. Go to Settings. And we should now have this Experiments tab in our DevTools. And when I click on this, there'll be the option to turn on Accessibility Inspection. And then I just need to close my DevTools and open them again. And now we're actually able to use these cool new accessibility dev tools. So for instance, I can go over and I can inspect this button. And looking in the Elements panel, uh, let's see, over here where you've got the, the sort of like the style tab and things like that. Go over a little bit more, we'll see that we have this new accessibility option. And I'll zoom this in a little bit so it's a bit easier to read. Here, let's actually, we'll dock the dev tools to the bottom of the screen so we can have a little bit more real estate. Mm, scoot this up. All right. Move it over. Accessibility, boom. OK, so now we see all sorts of cool accessibility-related information for this button element. And you can see right here, uh, there's a name field where it says Add to Cart, right? And that's the exact text that we've placed inside of that button. I'll zoom that in a little bit more so you can see the button up there at the top of the screen as well. So how is this name being applied to this button? Where did it actually get that value from? Well, if you look at the dev tools, you can see that there's a few different ways that a name can be calculated. Um, if the element has a title, right now it says it's not specified. Uh, for some elements, it can actually take the content of the element. So since we actually put some text inside of our button right here, right? It's actually using that content to provide the name for the element. But there's other options as well, right? So it could be from label, it could be aria label and aria label by as well. And I'll talk about those in just a little bit, right? But so this is sort of like the, the basics of how we get a name for an element. And we can assert that things are you know, working as we expect by turning on a screen reader. And uh, I'll move this box up here so you can kind of see what voiceover is saying. Turn on my volume. On the frame one, inside of the frame, to enter add to cart button. Voice over off. Right, and so you can see that the screen reader announces the name of the control when it lands on it. So it said Add to Cart, and then it announces the role button. Right. 
Um, now, for some elements, uh, something like a checkbox, for instance, uh, you usually don't have the ability to like put text inside of the tag. So it can't generate a name from its content. So let's do another example here. We'll do input type equals checkbox. Uh, we'll get rid of that add to cart button. The input type equals checkbox. Maybe we'll mark it as checked already, right? So you can see this this little guy over here is checked. You know what you might do sometimes? You might just say, okay, cool. Well, um, I'll say like sign up for our newsletter, right? So a sighted user is going to be able to see that text on screen, and they'll know that okay, that that text is associated with that checkbox because they're right next to each other. But if we inspect the checkbox. We can see that it actually does not have any sort of like computed name right now. So the problem here is if I'm using a screen reader and I just land on this checkbox, all it's going to do is say, you know, uh, checkbox. It's not actually going to tell me anything else about it. So how do I give this element a name? Well, the way that we do that with a lot of sort of the, the built in controls is we use the native label element. So if I just wrap this input in a label tag, And put that text inside of there. So I've got both the input and the text that's labeling it inside of this label tag. And now, if I go and I inspect the input element and we look at our dev tools, we can see that its name is now set to sign up for our newsletter because it got that from that label element. Uh, another technique that you can use, if for instance, maybe like wrapping something in a label doesn't quite work for your needs, is you can give the element an ID. So I can give this input an ID. I'll just call it check, or something like that. And then I can give my label an I, or sorry, I can give my label a for attribute, and I can associate it with the ID of that element. So I'll say my label is for that check element, right? So I'm matching it to its ID. I'm matching its ID reference. And now if I go and inspect these things, we'll see that we still get that name. And uh, one thing you might note is in the accessibility dev tools right now, it says from label for label undefined. So there's a little bit of a bug in this dev tool. Again, these are still experimental, so you might uncover bugs from time to time. But when that bug is fixed, it'll probably say something like label for, and it'll you know, specify this label element right here. Tell us that's the label that is uh, providing uh, the name for our element. OK, cool. So, so that works for native controls, you know, button, input, uh, select, things like that. right? You can use the label element on those. Um, but there are instances where the label element itself doesn't quite work for your needs either. So I'll give you another example here. Uh, let's say we're making a button. And I've already written some CSS for this button. And it's going to be one of those sort of classic hamburger menu buttons. I'm sure you've seen these on responsive websites before, right? So usually when, you, when you're using a hamburger menu button, you don't put any text on screen near it. Now you can. You could write the word menu underneath, and you could use that to, to label the element, which would be cool. But you know, some designs folks don't do that. So how do I give this button uh, some sort of you know, a, a name? How do I give it some sort of a, a label? So one technique that we can use to do that is we can use the aria label attribute. The aria label attribute is basically going to provide a name for the element. And if that element already had like text content or something like that, like an like a, like a actual button element, the aria label element is going to trump that text content. And that will be the only text that is used, what is inside the aria label. So in this case, for this menu button, I'm going to give it aria label equals, we'll just say menu, right? And now we go and we inspect this element using our dev tools. And we can see that the name for the element was menu. And we can see that that value is coming off of that aria label attribute. And it even cites that we've got some aria attributes here, right? Cool. So that is another technique that you can use. You know, if you need to label something, but you, you don't have the ability to put on screen text on the page, this is a very, very handy technique. Um, again, if you are building any sort of site for, for, or any sort of site in general, but you want your screen reader users to be able to sort of like pick out the controls that have non visual labeling, this is a very helpful technique. The last thing I want to talk about is how you can uh, associate other elements as your label for things like custom controls. So let's say I'm building a, a really, really fancy custom widget, maybe a custom checkbox or a custom dropdown menu, something that doesn't have um, a native analog in the browser. Uh, <clears throat> I can use another attribute called aria labeled by to associate a label with that element. The reason why I'd want to use aria labeled by is because the native label tag 
only works with a few sort of like select built-in elements. So it works for button, input, and, and select. But if I'm making custom controls and things like that, unfortunately, the label element is not able to provide those elements uh, a label. So what I'm going to have to do is use the aria labeled by attribute. So let me walk you through an example of that. Um, let's see. I've already written some CSS for a custom button. Now, if you watch the previous episode, maybe we can include a link like over here or something like that. You never, ever, ever want to make a div button. But I'm going to do it for this case just to demonstrate a scenario where just using the label tag is not going to work for an element. So I'm going to a div. I'll say class equals button. And we'll say shop now. OK, so we're making a, a button that lets folks shop for some stuff, right? So we had a role equals button, right? So that'll identify uh, this element's role. Uh, we'll give it a tab index of 0, so it's focusable, right? That's important. Cool. So if we go and we look at this element in our dev tools, it says this thing is role equals button. It sort of has a label of, of shop now, right? Because it's, it's pulling it out of its text content. And that's, that's useful. Um, but maybe we have a bunch of shop now buttons on the page. Maybe we have a bunch of different sections where someone can shop for some stuff. So let's say this one in particular is under like men's shirts. So someone could land on this button and say shop now, but it doesn't really tell them what they're shopping now for. I want a way to associate men's shirts with this shop now button. And I can do that using are you labeled by. So the same way that we did things uh, with, with the, the for attribute and label element, we're going to give this heading an ID, an ID of men's shirts. Okay, And then we're going to associate that with this custom control. We'll say aria labeled by, which I always misspell, equals men's shirts. Okay, So open that up. Look at it in the dev tools. Look at our accessibility tab here. And we will see now that the name for this element is men's shirts. OK, well, that's kind of what we wanted. But we've lost the other bit where it says shop now. We kind of have to add that back in. And so this is where we see actually one of the really cool features of Aria Labeled By, which is that it can compose labels together by referencing different elements. In fact, the element that's you know, containing the Aria Labeled By attribute can even self-reference you know, it's itself and use that to compose a better label. So let's give that element an ID as well. So we'll take our, our div button here and we'll say men's shirts button. And we'll say, are you labeled by men's shirts, men's shirts button, right? And now we go back and we inspect this control and we look at the accessibility. And we'll see that now, if a screen reader lands on this element, it's going to say, men's shirts, shop now, button. We can ver verify that using a voiceover. Voiceover on Chrome, Je men's shirts, shop now, button. Voiceover off. Right on. That's really nice. And we also see down here in the DevTools, we get references to the elements um, that are the ID for the references that are being used for ARIA labeled by, which is really, really helpful. So that about covers the, the basics of labeling. Um, if you have a site today, you, maybe you haven't gone through it with a screen reader just yet, maybe give that a shot. And if you've got some controls that perhaps they're just announcing the role but not announcing the associated label, then consider using some of these techniques to make sure that those elements have a proper label, proper name. Right? Uh, if you have any more questions for me, you can always leave them down in the comments below or hit me up on a social network of your choosing. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of AlleyCast, you can always catch more over in our playlist. Or click the little subscribe button, and you'll get an email notification whenever we launch new stuff on the channel. As always, thanks for watching.